Nice of you to uh, drop by. <laughs> I'm going to talk about how to free yourself up so that you can move your body any way you want to while doing opposites and butterflies. In an earlier lesson, we talked about the getting the basic variables of butterflies and opposites is um, being able to say spin inwards, thread the needle, and spinning outwards, threading the needle, being able to open up and close in either direction and being comfortable having either hand on top. So that's a pretty er early thing you need to do if you want to dance around freely, is make sure that you can do those basic variables. So say you've got that now. And the next step, I think, is to start exploring the movement and kind of stretching it a bit. So say you take inwards butterfly and do, say, a few thread the needles. And you're probably doing it here at your belly button because right? that's where most people feel the most comfortable with their poi. But it's a bit limiting if you're always doing everything here, because you're always going to be jumping, you're going to be in this move, and then you might stall, and you come into this move, and you do some of this, and then you stall again, you come back into this. And it's always in this, like, this little area. So first thing is just stretch out of that. Do your thread the needle, and take it through a big circle. Right. And the other way. I think every move you do, think about stuff like this and try to think to yourself, you've got all this space around your body. Why not see if you can take every move and take it through that entire space? And you'll be surprised where maybe over here, boom, boom, crash, crash, you mess up over there and off to either side, you have trouble. It won't take that long. If you start to come over here and over here, pretty soon you'll have a skill through all of that. And then next time you go from doing, say, a weave into the butterfly, you know, why not play around with it a bit? Like all of this stuff comes from just having that general control and comfort with your plans and your moves. And of course, then you do it outwards if you've been doing it inwards. And do the same thing. Ta -da, ta -da. Learning to be able to go right through complete range of motion. And you can think about that both in terms of what your arms are doing and also what your body's doing. So you can become comfortable with the poise you bend and sway and turn and just start to get really comfortable that no matter what you're doing, you can keep control of that thread and needle. And just having that base skill of being able to explore and move and bend and turn is going to start meaning you can uh, be a lot more expressive because you can move your body however you want to and dance how you want to dance. I think it's also really useful, uh, but not for the reasons you might think at first, to learn to thread the needle behind your back and behind your head. Oops. But not because I think anybody's going to notice particularly that you're threading the needle behind your back or behind your head. And if they're not also poi spinners, they wouldn't be particularly impressed anyway because they don't know how hard it is. But the reason it is useful, if you look at this pattern, this is what we call the butterfly. And we call it that because it kind of has that, butter, that flapping effect, right? But it only has that effect if the circles, if the planes are really tight. So if you're going like this, you don't have that effect anymore, do you? You lose that symmetry, you lose that kind of bouncing. The planes are really tight, you get it back. And that, the first time people see this, that's what mesmerizes them about it so much. Usually, in the beginnings, people lose that when they go behind their head. They might have it in front, and then they go, right? And behind them, it's more like this. So, in passing the poi from front to back to front to back, if you can keep that tightness of your planes, so you keep having that flapping effect, that's going to look really amazing. So in front, it teaches you to keep your, it helps keep your planes really tight in front. And if you can learn to do it behind, same thing. Uh, but this is the warning, it's, it's frustrating. It's not of my entire history of poise, it's probably one of the most frustrating things I ever learned to do 
I was threading the needle behind my back. And it took weeks. Um, I wasn't fast with this at all, but I was, I was determined and I persevered. First step is learning to keep one poi behind your back at a time. So um, you want to make sure you can keep your left poi going, your right poi going. We cover that in another lesson. And once you've got that, then you can start playing with it. So you keep your left poi behind your back. This is inwards. And my right poi, I'm going to try to drop it down on top of the left. And that might be, that might be 20 minutes of whack bang thud while you, you learn to do that. But uh, eventually you'll get it. If it's coming down on top, it's going to be on the outside at the bottom. If it slips underneath, it's going to be on the inside at the bottom. Inside and outside meeting down at my heels, which one's passing inside of the other. So, in fact, that might even be a way to learn this. If you, say, put your right inside your left, and you go swing, swing, swing in the motion, then put your left inside and go swing, swing, swing into, oops, swing, swing, swing in the motion. That could be another, another approach. Uh, everybody's going to be a little different in this. Then eventually you'll be able to go on top, underneath, on top, switch, 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 switch. And then finally you've got it. For me, I got to a point where I could do it sort of five or six repetitions. And then for a couple of weeks, I couldn't get beyond that. They just, they'd crash. And it would really frustrate me sometimes. But then I just, I'd relax and I'd go back to practicing. And then eventually it just started to, I could hold it. Although still, I, uh, it's still not, I can't do it perfect. I'll get, I still get out of practice with it sometimes if I'm not doing it. So maybe at first, uh, you know, you want to be able to hold your right behind your head and your left behind your head, both. And then you can hold your right behind and let your left sort of pass through and on top, through and on top. If it's on top, at the top, it's further forwards in your right. And at the bottom, it's going to be further away from your butt. And then you can hold your left behind, and the right goes over, over, and then it slips under, under. And then the other one slips under, under. Um, and then eventually you can thread the needle. Another way to do that also is if you start, say you started threading the needle uh, outwards like this. And then you just let it bend over and over and over until it's behind your head. That, that could be another really good way to learn that. That might really work. If you're even going to try this, I expect that you're probably a little bit self-motivated with poi. Because if you're really not self-motivated, this, this isn't necessarily where you want to put your energy. Because you, you, you need a bit of um, you know, gusto to get through this. But once you've got it, what happens is you'll have this comfort with your, your planes that you didn't hit before. And then it really adds to the beauty of everything you do with opposites. Because when you go behind your head and behind your back, you really maintain sort of, yeah, that, that geometry. There's some cool, there's, I mean, there's particular moves that come out of this. So I think once you've, say, got it behind your head, that opens up stuff like, um, like this, right? Where you can sort of just, have one going inside the plane of the other, because you you know you know which ones in you know you know which planes inside. But uh, to me, the moves that come out of it are secondary. The main thing is opening up how beautifully your patterns look and how freely you can move with them. Um, so that and just and don't be. Fr I mean, <laughs> I remember this almost all too well when I was learning this. But uh, don't give up. You'll, it'll, for a little while, it might seem frustrating. It might not. You might go through it, no problem. Uh, if it does, trust me, keep at it, and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll have it in no time. So enjoy, play a lot, and we'll have some more ideas to play with soon.